uh, I would like to explain very briefly um, Stokes's theorem. Um, it's it's a short section of the notes. It's one and a half pages. Um, you can you can read it, um, but I do want to explain uh, a little bit about it. So. Stokes' theorem is the answer to the following question, right? We, we described integration. What, does, what is integration? Integration makes clear the fact that if you have an n-form, it gives a function on n-dimensional oriented manifolds. If you give me an n-dimensional oriented manifold, then an n-form evaluates on that to give a number. And the way it evaluates on it is by integration. Okay, that's what we call integration. But there's a special subset of n-forms, right? If we have n-forms, n-forms are part of the Duram complex, right? Going from zero forms all the way up to n-forms. So the integration is a, is a map from n-forms to R. But there's an exterior derivative which is coming from n-1 forms. And so the question, there's an obvious question, which is, this function on the manifold, which evaluates on the whole manifold, how is it, how is it different when, we, when that function is itself d of something of degree n minus 1? So what happens when we integrate something that's in the image of d? Okay. And the answer that Stokes' theorem gives is that we can compute this but purely by knowing the values of alpha on the boundary of n. And um, this j is the inclusion of the boundary of m inside m. Okay. So it's telling us that, you know, if you think about it, the, the, um, the integration over m is a map from n forms to r. Right. And what this is telling us is that if you um, if you pull back to the boundary and um, and then integrate over the boundary, right? Then what we're getting is a is an equality like this, so that this diagram commutes. Okay. Let me just move that here. Oops. Well, this is a kind of picture of Stokes's theorem. Okay. Okay, but there is a um, there is one uh, um, there is one uh, subtlety here, which always uh, which always causes a lot of confusion. So, M is oriented. This is important in order to define this symbol here. The integration along M is not defined unless M has a chosen orientation. Okay, but then on the right-hand side, we have another one of these symbols, which is the integral over boundary of M. So we have a manifold okay, with boundary. We have some manifold with boundary. And we have oriented M. But in order for this formula to even make sense, in order for Stokes' theorem to even make sense, we need to explain how to choose an orientation on the boundary of M. Okay, And so that's part of the statement of Stokes' theorem. M has to be an oriented manifold with boundary and let the boundary of M be oriented yeah and 
let the boundary of M be oriented with respect to an outward pointing vector field. Okay, then we have this formula. Okay. So all I want to do here is to explain what this what this means. So <clears throat> what it means is really that um, so the tangent space to M at a point of the boundary, right? Um, has what what we would call outward and inward pointing inward pointing vectors. So the outward pointing vectors are those which are on. So let me just zoom this in. So suppose this is suppose we have a point P inside the boundary of M, and we look at um, the tangent of um, M. So here's the boundary coming. Okay. Here's M. I'm just zooming into this point here. That's a point on the boundary. So the tangent space has a co-dimension one subspace, which is the tangent to the boundary. And this co-dimension one real subspace, it divides this vector space into two, two halves, the outward pointing and the inward pointing. And then you have, of course, the vectors which are tangent to the boundary, and we're going to ignore those. So we, when we say that we have an outward pointing vector field, it means that we have a vector field like this, which at every point on the boundary is pointing outwards. Okay. And um, and the point is that if um, if x is an outward pointing uh, vector field and v is a volume form on on m then uh, we have we can we can take this vector okay, and we can plug it in we can do the interior product on v and this will be um, an n minus one form on m and then we can um, we can pull this back to the boundary pull this back to the boundary and this will be an n minus one form on the boundary and this will be a volume form on the boundary of m okay so um, to give you an example of to give you a kind of an understanding of what this is so let's say that we have a coordinate system adapted to the boundary. So um, let's say that we have x1 up to xm, or let's say up to xn, um, and the half space is xn greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so the, the manifold with boundary is going to be like this. And this, this here is the boundary of M. Okay, so we have a manifold with boundary, and these are adapted coordinates to the boundary. So um, a volume form on M would be the standard one would be dx1 wedge up to dxn this would be 
an N form on M. Okay, and then an outward pointing vector field would be a vector field like like this, which is pointing outwards. So x would be um, we could take like d by d uh, x n, but d by d x n is pointing up actually. So it would have to be minus d by d x n. And then, um, and then I, what I could do is take the interior product of x right and this would be the um, so in the in the assignment you had uh, a um, a question which required uh, understanding the interior product. So the interior product, the way that it works, is that you take this vector and you just plug it in to each each of these one forms in turn with signs alternating signs. So in other words, this will be. Let me just work it out in in uh, boring detail. So this will be first just by definition of the interior product. The interior product is a derivation. Ix is a derivation of degree minus 1. So when you apply a derivation, you have to first apply it to the first item. Then you apply it to the second item. Except that because this der derivation is degree minus 1, and because you've flipped it over something of degree 1, there's a sign, which is minus 1 to the product of the degrees of the elements, which is 1 times 1. So in this case, it would be 1. Sorry, 1 times minus 1, which would be minus 1, but minus 1 to the power 1 or minus 1 or 3 or anything odd is the same. So there's really going to be a minus sign here. Then I continue. Okay, and there's going to be a minus 1 to the, now it's 2 times minus 1, so it'll be 2, so there won't be a minus sign, and, and so on. Okay, now let's take a look. So if x is d by dxn, d by dxn going into dx1, right, that's just the pairing of a, of a, uh, of a basis element, this is a basis element for the tangent, and this is a basis element for the cotangent, and these are dual bases. So d by dxn going into dx1 is doing nothing. So this will be 0, this will be 0, and so on, until the very last term. That's the one that won't be 0. So uh, the last term will be dx1, dx2, all the way to dxn minus 1, wedge ix, dxn. Okay? And the sign would be minus 1 times, you know, it technically it's minus 1 times the degree of this thing in front, which is degree n minus 1. Right? So in in the end, what you get, and actually let's just compute what this is. So x is minus d by dxn, and so this will be minus 1, just a constant function minus 1. And so that minus 1 is going to go in front. And if we look at how many minus 1s we have, so we have, here we have n minus 1 negatives, and that's another one. So it's in total, it's n. So it's minus 1 to the power n dx1 wedge dx n minus 1. Okay, so the result is extremely simple. Okay. And it, um, 
and and so the important thing is that you see here like if you were integrating an end form on on this manifold with boundary right if you were trying to do stokes's theorem right then the orientation that you would use so so what this means is that if we're using the orientation so in Stokes, so okay, the conclusion of this is that in Stokes' theorem, okay, if dx1 dxn is the orientation, okay, then, and this is here we're using. Uh, boundary coordinates. Okay, where, where when I say boundary coordinates, I mean it's a coordinate system like this, where the manifold is given by this half space x n greater than or equal to zero. If you were using slightly different ones, like let's say if if the boundary if the if the manifold was like x one greater than or equal to zero, then you'd need to redo this. But I'm using coordinates where x n greater than or equal to zero defines the manifold in these coordinates. Okay, then the induced orientation on the boundary is minus 1 to the n dx1 wedge to dx n minus 1. Okay. Right. And so um, you, you would need to make sure that the atlas that you're using for the boundary computation is one that is compatible with this orientation, the one that has the minus one to the n in front, like this. Okay. So you could imagine that, yeah. All right, now that, that's an extremely detailed description of what is meant by oriented with respect to the outward pointing vector field. Okay, but um, in terms of why this why this theorem is true, why this formula is true, the um, uh, the the um, well, you should take a look at the proof um, in the um, you should look at at the, at the proof of um, of Stokes' theorem in section 6.4, but um, but basically the um, yeah so <clears throat> you know it, it's it's again one of these local to global arguments where in essentially in the local case the proof is the same as the proof that um, that you gave in your advanced calculus course, but that's uh, valid in one of these open um, open charts. And then and then we, we kind of build that up to the whole manifold using the partition of unity. So, um, so you, you should go through that um, yourself. I just want to mention an, the important uh, meaning of this. So what's, what's the meaning of this? Well, what, what are some consequences of this? So first big consequences is that if M is compact and the boundary of M is empty, then the integral of anything exact is zero because it's equal to the integral on the boundary, but the boundary is empty. Okay, so what is this telling us? This is telling us that the function, let's say in quotation marks, the function defined by an exact k-form on compact k-dimensional oriented manifolds is zero. Okay, so this is the reason why exact and closed and exact uh, forms 
Um, in other words, the cohomology and the study of the Duram complex and the cohomology is very closely related to integration. Um, K forms, as we said before, they determine functions on K dimensional orientable manifolds, but this function is zero if the K form is exact. So that's why, in a sense, exact forms are not as interesting from this point of view. Okay. Um, um, another, yeah. Okay. Another important consequence is that is the following. Okay. Suppose. Um, uh, Yeah, let me see how to phrase this. Yeah, you could phrase it this way. Suppose that um, um, yeah, how to phrase this. So this is not. Um, yeah, so suppose that we had um, M1 and M2, and let's say that they're uh, cobordant, N manifolds, so that there exists um, an n man of uh, say n plus one manifold such that the boundary of n was m one disjoint union m two and suppose that and suppose that actually yeah let let me there's something interesting to be said here, but I'll leave it for another day. Um, better for me to say the following, that, so here what we saw, this main consequence, was we, we saw that if something, that if we have a, um, <clears throat> an end form which is exact, then its integral is zero. Okay, now here's, here's the important um, obvious corollary to this. If we have now a volume form, on M, let's say on a compact um, manifold M, okay? So this means that it's an, it's an N form, it's a top degree form, and it's nowhere vanishing, okay? And it means that it has an equivalence class which determines an orientation, okay? And this means that you know we can we can um, this makes sense that we can now that we have an orientation on the manifold M we can integrate V and this will give us a number. Now what about this number? Well, we know that um, this is if this is nowhere vanishing, um, then. Uh, then we should be able to write v as f dx1 wedge dxn, where f, if, so if we choose, so in oriented coordinates, okay, this means that, what does it mean oriented coordinates? It means that if we take the coordinates and we take the, the, uh, the natural volume form that they determine in their order, Okay, that this should be equivalent using the equivalence relation to v. But the equivalence relation says that they must be related by a positive function. f is a positive function. And so this means that when we compute the value of this integral in every chart, it will be the integral of a positive function using the usual Lebesgue integral. So this means that 
in every open set, in every chart, this is giving a positive number and we're getting a sum of positive numbers. So this means that this is necessarily positive. And in particular, it's non-zero and positive. Okay. So because of the fact that this is non-zero, this implies that it cannot be exact. V cannot be be exact. Because of this argument, if it were exact, then the integral would be zero. So this means that v is closed. It's obviously closed because an any n form is closed, right? d of it is an n plus 1 form. v is closed, but not exact. Which means that, this, the, that v has a class in cohomology, hn of m, which is non-zero. Sorry, there's a, there's a bad uh, overlap of notations. This, I, by this, I just mean that it has a class in terms, of, um, the, in terms of defining an orientation. Here, I mean the Duram cohomology class okay, is non-zero. So this means that any uh, compact oriented manifold has uh, hn m non-zero. The top cohomology is non-zero. The top the cohomology is non-zero. So in fact, if m is connected, is also connected, then this cohomology group is just r. It's just one dimensional, but um, we, we don't quite have enough to prove that right now. Um, but at least we know that um, there is this one non-zero uh, class, which is the, the one given by the, by the volume. Um, actually, it should not be too difficult for us to show that this is one-dimensional. Um, I, I maybe should have put it on the assignment. Okay, all right. <clears throat>